What's up, fam? Welcome back to the channel. We got UFC 300 going down this weekend. Speaking of the main event, I've already broken down Alex Pereira. Today, we're going to be doing the striking breakdown of Jamal the man with the plan, green eggs and ham, Hill, one of the best strikers in the light heavyweight division. Let's get into this video, baby. What up, everybody? Everybody, what's up, everybody? Hey Fight Fans, we got a big weekend coming up with UFC 300 right around the corner. With matchups set to make history in the octagon, this is one you don't want to miss. I've teamed up with DraftKings Sportsbook to bring you closer to the action. Right now, all new customers who bet $5 will get $150 in bonus bets instantly. That's right, new customers bet just $5, get $150 in bonus bets instantly. If sports betting is not yet available in your state, don't worry. You can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings daily fantasy and have a shot to win cash prizes. UFC 300 is going to be fire, you guys. Y'all better check it out. It's going to be nuts. I'm going to go with the champ, Zhang Wei Li. And of course, main event, you got Alex Pereira versus my man Jamal Hill. And guess what? I'm going to go with Jamal because y'all count them out. That's what. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code WONDERBOY and bet just $5 on any wager and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code WONDERBOY only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Well, let's get into this. Number one, I cannot wait for this fight, dude. It's gonna be a striking extravaganza. Oh yeah, by the way, you gonna be, you guys can watch it with me and Sweet Tea. I almost forgot to add, I almost forgot to tell you guys. This Saturday, we're gonna be going live for the main card. So come watch it with me and Sweet Tea. Come see what we got to say. How are we gonna break this down? Watch one of these guys get knocked out, hanging out with us. Anyway, my man Jamal Hill has coming off his Achilles injury, which he's been out for a while. And of course, what crazier fight to have than fight one of the toughest guys in the UFC, Alex Pereira. I cannot believe this is happening. And he would say, let's do this. You know what I mean? He even gone to say that he's going to knock him out. What? He said he's going to knock out Alex Pereira. I would love to see it happen. I think it would be amazing. Any one of these guys can put each other to sleep. But let's get back to this breakdown. Now, if you've watched these kind of breakdowns before, I like to look at a few things when it comes to these guys striking. Ichi, we got footwork. Me, which is two, we have timing. San, San, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing it back. It's like riding a bike. We have variety of technique, Ichi Nissan. She, we have distance management. All that, I think, in my head, will put together an, an amazing striker. So, let's get into my man Jamal Hill's footwork. What am I looking at when I'm looking at footwork? Well, your ability to be able to move forward, the ability to be able to move backwards, and of course, side to side in different angles. We all know that my man Jamal Hill is gonna come downhill. He plods forward, he'll move back slightly, mostly using his fade back, and his side to side movement is usually when he's exhausted. He'll end up backpedaling when whenever he's exhausted. My man Jamal Hill, he loves to switch sides whenever he fights, but his movement is more of a plodding type of a movement, either walking forward or plodding backwards. He doesn't have a whole lot of fast twitch movement when it comes to his movement, kind of like myself, not a whole lot of angle changes or anything like that. Pretty much, he'll put his right or left side forward. That's something that I like about Jamal Hill. He does like to switch sides, which makes it very difficult to figure out. And it changes up the angle just a little bit on where your strikes are coming from. For instance, if I have my right side forward and throw my left hand, my power hand, you got to worry about that, obviously. But once I switch sides, my power hand is now the other direction coming from the right to the left or from the left to the right, depending on which side I have forward. The direction is off slightly, but it, that's, it takes some adju an adjustment from your opponent in order to kind of figure that out, right? So he does like to switch sides, but his movement forward and backwards, more of a plodding movement. Now, sometimes when you see him fatigue a little bit, he will get on his bicycle and kind of back up, kind of like Muhammad Ali, for instance. He's got that back pedal, which is fairly basic, but it does help you stay, look like you're staying active, while you're actually resting. So while you're moving around, you can kind of flick the jab a little bit with your back pedal, keeping your opponent busy, but also at the same time, being able to catch a breath. Even though his footwork isn't all that great, what is amazing and it has nothing to do with his footwork is his fade back. Man, you see it over and over, especially against Glover Teixeira. When you saw him fight Glover Teixeira, OSP guys with those long arms, even Johnny Walker, he'll stand in their range. And as they start to strike, he will fade back. 
Now, what does that fade back do? That fade back allows your opponent to swing and miss, and then he can come back over that technique and counter strike. So I think that he doesn't necessarily have to have great footwork as long as he keeps his opponent in jabbing range and being able to be able to slide back to where that strike barely misses and be able to counter strike. Dude, he doesn't need all the best footwork. So his footwork, even though it's fairly basic, I do like the fact that he switched sides. I'm gonna give his footwork a C plus. Moving on to timing. Now, what am I talking about when I'm talking about timing? Well, the ability to be able to see your opponent's mistake and you capitalize on it. For instance, let's say you make them make the mistake, right? Having to do with your movement or maybe you're striking or maybe you're purposely leaving your guard down so that way your opponent strikes. And then you do something, either move out of the way, block or punch it at the same time, be able to take advantage of your opponent's mistake, which is very, very difficult. Your timing has got to be on point and your awareness of your opponent has got to be on point. Not just that, but your ability to be able to see your opponent's telegraph. If you, have, you guys are probably, if you're a martial artist, you've probably sometimes sparred somebody who you thought could read your mind. Like they knew exactly what you were gonna throw before you even threw it, right? So you need a lot of that ability to be able to have good timing. To be able to see this technique coming and then you figure it out what to do before they even get that technique off. Either meeting them in the middle, making them swing or miss, blocking and countering, all that is timing. And let me tell you, this dude puts people to sleep. His timing is up here. My hand is still going up into outer space right now. You just can't see it. His timing is so flipping amazing. I mean, you saw it perfectly against Johnny Walker. This dude was throwing literally at the same time. Now, before I get into that knockout, you're mostly open, right? Whenever you're throwing a technique, yes. Most of the time with good counter strikers, they will hit people while they are throwing a strike, while their opponent is throwing a strike. So you gotta be able to see that coming. And when it comes to the Johnny Walker fight, it was the most perfect timing ever. He had Johnny Walker backed up, Johnny Walker went to sit down on a punch, and Jamal Hill literally threw the exact same time. He even got hit. Jamal Hill got hit with Johnny Walker's right hand, but he hit him with his right hook first, right on the temple, putting him out. It was awesome. His timing is so good. So I, I suggest you go check that check that out. Johnny Walker against my man Jamal Hill. That was perfect. Another example of great timing is when he fought Jimmy Crew. Beautiful right hook that he landed at the exact same time. They both were in an open stance. Jimmy Crew had his left side forward trying to throw a big right hand bomb and Jamal Hill had his right side forward. So they were in an open stance and he hit him with a perfect check hook at the exact same time his opponent was trying to hit him with that overhand hand right. Beautiful timing. Let's go. So I'm going to give my man Jamal Hill's timing. Definitely an A+. Plus. Let's see if he'll pull it off against another guy with good timing, Alex Pereira. It's going to be awesome. Let's. You can tell I'm excited about this one. Moving on to a variety of technique. Now, what am I talking about when I'm talking about variety? Obviously, the meaning is in the name. Variety, okay? The ability to switch sides. And switching sides does throw your opponent off and you have more weapons in your arsenal when you're able to switch sides. Got to learn to do that, though. Number two, throwing techniques from awkward angles, man. You got to be able to throw techniques from awkward angles. And number three, the amount of techniques that this person can throw. The spin elbows, the tornado kicks, the flying front kicks, Leo to Machida, all that kind of goodness, all right? So let's get into number one, the ability to switch sides, yes. Yes, 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 yes. This is this is definitely a good thing that Jamal Hill does. And I do believe it will have an effect in the Alex Pereira fight, the ability to switch sides. And this guy does it. He is constantly switching sides. Why is this good? Well, whenever you step out there in a fight, and let's say you have, you know, you're a right side forward and you're going in that first round, right side forward, you're tagging this dude up, you're blocking, he might be throwing some stuff. And halfway through that first round or even into the second round, right when your opponent thinks he's got you figured out and then you switch sides and once you switch sides you have a whole different arsenal from that side it's like you're finding a different opponent and that ability jamal has so that is freaking awesome look for that in this alex Pereira fight number two throwing techniques from awkward angles this dude does throw techniques from awkward angles he may not have a, a huge variety of technique but he does throw his his techniques from a part of his body that you wouldn't expect right kind of like myself 
Very rarely do I have my hands up. If I'm in my opponent's striking range, that's when I bring my hands up, it's easier to block. But when I'm out in the open, I want to be as tricky as possible. Most people, whenever they fight, they look at you from the shoulders up. They look at you in your face, in your eyes. And when our hands are low, like Jamal Hill and myself, it's very difficult to be able to see the techniques coming because they're coming down from our waist. And my man Jamal Hill, he works that way. He'll throw his strikes from down here at his waist. Now, you are exposed there. If you're not careful, you could get put to sleep, okay? So I recommend if you're just starting, don't throw your strikes from your waist. It takes years and a lot of training and sparring to be able to do that. Jamal has developed it, he, he's good at it, and that's not for all fighters, but he does throw these techniques from awkward angles, hands down by your waist, so you can't see them. And he doesn't throw your typical, you know, regular jabs or crosses. They do come from awkward angles over top. He'll throw his jab almost like an uppercut. Once he's got you hurt, that's when the flurries really start to come. But throwing techniques from awkward angles is definitely up there, bro, at the same time. And finally, the amount of techniques you can throw. Your opponent, or the, whoever I'm talking about can throw. Jamal Hill. It's late, guys. Give me a break. It's like really late right now, and I'm exhausted. I just want to go to sleep. But anyway, Jamal Hill. I wouldn't say he's got a crazy variety of techniques. It's just the techniques that he does throw, he's very good at. He's got great boxing. He's got great movement. He will throw head kicks, which he did numerous times during the Glover to Sheriff fight. I'd suggest you guys go check that out. The dude does have a pretty high variety, but I wouldn't say it's like over the top, correct? So I would literally give his variety like a B plus or an A. I wouldn't give it an A plus, but it's, it's good enough to be able to put people to sleep and keep people guessing. Moving on to distance management, my fave. Now, what am I talking about when I'm talking about distance management? Well, the ability to be able to fight at all ranges. We have long range, right? Which is you're gonna be your longest techniques or even closing the gap to hit your opponent. You have kickboxing range. I can still put my hands on you, but I can also add range where I can kick you in the face as well. And of course, boxing range. I'm close enough where I can really sit down on my punches and really light your head and body up. And of course, close range. This is where your close range technique, your knees, your elbows, and we're gonna start off with long range. I think this is where my buddy Jamal Hill really tests his opponents, I would say, mindset. I think this is where he really frustrates his opponent. He's got a really long reach and he loves to keep his opponent at long range distance. He'll pick you apart and backpedal, kind of like Muhammad Ali, just to kind of frustrate you. And I think this is where he really gets his, his opponent to really start reaching and that's when he starts countering you. So he'll stay at a range for a little bit, pop, pop. He'll move in, throw his jab cross and get back out or just flick the jab. You'll see him do that a lot. He did that a lot against Glover Teixeira and it could be because he didn't want to get taken down. Well, he was very wary of that. So his long range ability is very, very good because he frustrates his, his, his opponent. Moving on to kickboxing range. Now, his kickboxing range is, is, is fairly good. I think when he backs his opponent up against the fence and he's got him hurt, this is where you really see this, right? He's got really long arms, so even at boxing range, he can still kick you in the face and still sit down and put some really good power in his hands. Sometimes you get guys with really long legs and that range is a little different. They don't have the ability to throw a kick and then put that foot down to throw hands. They have to kick, close the gap, and then throw hands. So his kickboxing range is literally the same range as his boxing range, which is very, very good. You saw that against OSP. He had his opponent up against the fence and he was really hitting his opponent hard with those jab, crosses, uppercuts, and hooks. And of course, his close range, phenomenal. You see most of his fights, when he hurts guys, it's from that close range spot where he's throwing nonstop knees to their dome, which is hurting them. They drop and he finishes them with ground and pound. So to be honest with you, his distance management is so precise. That's another reason why this guy is so good at his striking. He'll pick you apart at long range, hit you with that jab, frustrate you, and then he'll step in with a head kick, boom, set it down, hit you with some power shots with his hands in boxing range. And then when you get frustrated and then want to take him down, that's when he's got you. He's got that close range takedown defense is really good. He'll get you in that close range tight clinch, boom, 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 hit you with some knees, put you to sleep, baby. This guy's awesome, bro. You know, his footwork isn't all that great. I gave him like, what, I think it was a C plus. His timing, a plus 100%. Variety of technique, 
I'll give him a B plus, okay. But then his distance management, another A plus. Now he's stepping out there this Saturday, UFC 300, with a guy that I gave high scores to as well. I'm looking forward to seeing these guys, and both of these guys got one hit or quit of power. So let me know in the comments down below what you thought of my breakdown. Also, who you got winning in the main event for UFC 300. By the way, I want to see you Saturday night hanging out with me and Sweet Tea watching the fight. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.